Hello everybody and welcome to my Night Photoshop tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can use the dodge and burn techniques uh, and I'm going to be using my statue photo again uh, and the general premise of what we're going to be doing with dodge and burn and what you normally use it for is we're going to increase our highlights uh, and we're also going to increase our shadows uh, what this is going to do is just going to add a bit more shape to the picture. It's going to allow us to make adjustments to uh, different parts of the picture. Uh, and generally, you can use it for a lot of things. So you can add, use it to add m muscle depth to skin. You can use it to add creases into clothing. Uh, and the, the, there's many more things you can use it for. I'm just going to use it to show you how to manipulate your highlights and your shadows. So. The dodge and burn tools are situated down here on the left hand side. And uh, we right click on here, we can select from our dodge and burn tool. Uh, alternatively, you can use O uh, on your keyboards. And uh, up here in our options, I'm just going to be using a standard uh, soft brush. So put it on a soft brush. Uh, and we're going to have my range set to mid tones. Uh, and my exposure I'm going to have right down at 15%. I don't want it too high because this is a technique where if you go crazy with it, it's just going to look silly. Uh, and I'm going to leave protect tones as ticks because that just allows you to go a little bit further without getting any kind of uh, anomalies or artifacts in your picture. Uh, and it's a fairly newer feature, so you might not have it if you're in an older version. Uh, Photoshop, uh, but the technique's still going to work. Uh, and so I'm going to have my dodge tool, and what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to do highlights. Uh, if I want to do shadows, then I can right click and go onto the burn tool, or alternatively, I can hold down my option key and it will allow me to switch between the two. So at the moment, if I go dodging some things, so I'm going to put a bit more on the chin. You'll see how it's just making it a little bit lighter and a little bit more pronounced. I'm going to put some more on the top lip to make the top lip look a bit more raised up. Uh, I'm going to put some along the nose as well. You can probably only just see these changes taking place. Now what I'm doing at the moment is I'm actually showing you a way to do this that I would never actually use. Uh, so in a minute I'm going to show you how to do this the kind of almost correct way. Because uh, what I'm doing at the moment is very destructive. I'm not actually able to undo what I'm doing here. I'm just going to give more of a cheekbone pronouncement there. Uh, so, there are my highlights. So I'm going to hold down my option key and I'm going to use this to add in some shadow. So, I'm going to put some more shadow underneath the chin. And I'm going to put some underneath the eye to make the eyes a bit more pronounced. Do a bit more darkness in the nose. And I'm going to go to a smaller and I'm going to put some shade around that lip. So you see I pronounced the top lip a lot more than what it was originally. Uh, and so that is the essence of it, all you're doing is just adding a bit more shape to your picture and making the light look a bit more pronounced. Now this is a very destructive method because now all I can do, I can do undo but I can't really go back that far uh, and you can't get rid of the tier changes and you can't change them later on. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to close this down and not save it and just reopen it again and I'll show you a much better way of doing this technique. So we're going to do it on a new layer, so I'm just going to go to layer and new layer, or you can press uh, command shift and N, uh, and then I'm going to go to edit and then fill, or shift F5, 
uh, and I'm going to fill using a 50% grey. And this just gives me a completely grey layer that's halfway between white and black. Uh, and we're going to change the blending mode on this layer. So I'm going to switch it to uh, one of my overlay uh, layers. So I could just put it to an overlay. Because it's 50% grey, overlay isn't actually going to do anything at the moment, which is what we want. We just want it to be a blank grey layer. Uh, I'm not going to use overlay, I'm actually going to switch to a soft light just because it works a little bit better with the dodging and burning techniques. And then instead of drawing onto my statue uh, image down here, I'm going to draw, I'm going to dodge a burn onto this layer. Uh, so I'm going to select my dodge tool and I'm going to start doing the same dodges and burns that I just did. So I'm going to put I'm going to pronounce the jawline a little bit more. Put some under some shadows underneath using the burn tool. And the beauty of this now is because I've got it on my layer, I can hide that layer and I can see what effect I'm having. So you can actually see the effects of my dodges and burning now a lot clearer. Uh, and also, I can turn off uh, the layer underneath, uh, and if I make my background a grey layer instead, so let's, I'll turn my background off, you, you can actually see on that layer now exactly where I'm putting my dodges and my burns uh, and we can keep putting them in so I'm going to put the one above the dip in again so let's make it a bit smaller and we're going to keep highlighting that top lip and then I'm going to make myself smaller and in my burn tool And I'm going to go above the lip and just put some shadow in there. And so now when I turn this off and on, you can notice how much I've actually changed those lips to make them have a bigger, more pronounced top lip. Uh, and uh, if we go, if we turn this layer off, we can see exactly where this has happened. And now the other thing that is useful with this is sometimes our differences between the two can be quite harsh. So if I make my brush a bit bigger and say I do some burning here and some highlights here, there's a bit harsh between the two. I don't really want that much of a difference. Uh, so what you can do is just grab your uh, lasso tool and just highlight the area that is being a bit harsh go to filter, go to blur, go to Gaussian blur, and then I'm just going to leave it at my radius of 10. You can move your radius back and forwards and it will give you this preview of what your blur is going to look like. I'm just going to leave it at the default of 10. Press OK and it's going to blur my two dodges and burns together. Control D to deselect what I've lassoed. And uh, then when I go back into this, it's a lot smoother, the blur that I've used now. Uh, it looks a lot better. And that's it for dodging and burning. Uh, if you've got any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. Uh, get as much practice as you can. Uh, you can do it on your own pictures if you, if you want. It makes them look a lot better. Uh, and it's something that people use in retouching a lot. It's a very simple technique, very quick to do. Uh, and it's got a lot of uses that we'll come on to in later tutorials. Thanks for listening, and I hope to catch you in the next tutorial.